Cars, a copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 252. Regarding a missing woman, five feet five, black hair, brown eyes. This woman has been missing from her home since July 17th. That is all. Gordon. As we study the facts of the cases and police records, we are struck by the resemblance of some of them to storybook drama. They are like works of fiction. Yes, it is true that so long as men are ruled by passion, so long will there be crimes of violence and unrestrained emotions. Such is the drama that will now unroll before you. The drama of the Black Cat. On the morning of July 17th, 1932, a woman walked into the Bureau of Missing Persons in the Los Angeles Police Department. Good morning. May I do something for you? Well, I'd like to know how to go about finding a missing person. They told me in the homicide room across the hall that I'd have to come over here. Well, that depends a great deal on the circumstances surrounding this disappearance. Well, it's my sister that I'm hunting for. I'm not even sure she has disappeared. But her husband says she's just gone away for a visit. Well, does he know where she is? No. He says he doesn't. You see, he's a very timid man. Sort of a Casper Milk Cook Toast type. If you know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. I wouldn't want him to know that I'd made this report. It would upset him. How long has your sister been gone? Well, it's almost three months now. Three months? And you're just now questioning it? Oh, she's gone lots of times before without telling any of us where she was going. This is the first time she's been gone so long. Well, if you'll just give me a description of your sister, we'll get out a bulletin on it. We'll let you know if we hear anything. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I do hope nothing has happened to her. In the months that followed, Vera Dresden made inquiries concerning her sister. But always the Bureau of Missing Persons reported no trace of the missing woman. Three years passed. Vera has risen steadily from an extra player to bit parts in pictures, and at last has received her first important part. Oh, hey, get the cheddar. I think a toast is in order. Well, it better be good. I'm just beginning to get this cowboy interested in dancing. <laughs> oh, shucks, Miss Vera. I can throw a steer a whole lot better than I can dance. You're telling me? Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, let's start over. Now, dearly, dearly beloved, we're gathered here in the presence of these witnesses to do honor to a most clever and promising young actress, Vera Dresden. Oh, sure. And <laughs> uh, now, here's to the day when we celebrate Vera's first starring part. <laughs> For an actress that's been promised a star's part, you surely look mighty forlorn, Miss Vera. You 
You ain't going moody on us, are you? No, Bud. I'm not going moody. I was just thinking about my sister. You ain't never heard from her, have you? No. Been three years now. I thought you and Dolly was pretty fond of each other. We were. I saw Dan on the street this afternoon. I brought it all back. First time I'd seen him in almost a year. Oh, Daniel's a mouse. I don't blame Dolly for walking out on him. I'd like to tell him what I think of him. Well, maybe you'll get a chance to. He always comes around to borrow money whenever he's in his house. Oh, well, come on. Let's drink and be merry. Come on. Fill him up. Tomorrow we may disappear. Oh, crying out loud, who's that? Quiet, quiet, everybody. Oh. It's you, Dad. Well, I was expecting you. <laughs> Greetings, my beautiful sister-in-law. May I come into your parlor? Yes, yes, come in. I'm just in the mood to tell you a few things. Well, 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 if it ain't Daniel a lion tamer. And drunk as a lord. Well, shush my boots. The little rabbit is drunk. Yeah, I'm drunk, so what? And I ain't no rabbit. I'm a man, see? Yes, you must be. If you were half a man, you'd have my sister with you, or at least know where she is. Maybe I do, sister. Maybe I do. Oh, forget it. Come on, let's have a drink. Sure, I'll have a drink. How long have you been drinking this time? What's it to you? I'll drink if I want to. I'm a human being. See, and I got right. All my life, I've been kidded and kicked to bound. Well, I'm a man now, see? Sure, I'll drink. Because when I drink, nobody kids me. They haven't got the nerve. Oh, Oh, boy, they laugh, you sap. That's all you got in your empty heads is foolish ideas. Stop twiddling your thumbs very noise. I'll do what I please. I said stop it. There. Now that's better. Much better. Now let's have a little music. A little appropriate music, if we can find it. Because I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> What's wrong with a guy, huh? Quiet, you. I'm going to tell you, brave people, a story. A ghost story. Oh, damn. Be quiet. Have you ever been in an old house that creaked when the wind blew against it, huh? When the rain on the roof made a groaning noise that seemed to be a part of the damp air that made the candle flames motionless as the eyes of a ghoul? The storm had smothered every other form of light or life except hers. And there she sat, reviling me with her eyes. I think she knew I wanted to kill her, Just as she had killed my soul with her hate. And reading my thoughts, she taunted and dared me with her eyes. Because she didn't know I'd been planning this night for months. No, she thought I was weak and spineless. Even when my hands were about her throat, she looked at me with such loathing, it seemed I was being suffocated instead of her. You know I'm going to kill you now, don't you? I'll make you believe it. You can't cheat me out of the only moment I've ever been your equal. You're dying. Dying! (laughs) Vera, why are you looking at me that way? Now I know. Now I know where my sister is. He murdered her. He murdered her. Oh, call the police. Call the police. Daniel Markheim was taken into custody, lodged in the Hollywood police station. Next morning, Detective Lieutenant Dwight and his partner, Joe Page, interviewed the prisoner. There he is, boys. The tamest killer I ever saw. A hangover like that bird's got to tame anybody. Not the worst third degree you could give that guy is to hold a cup of black coffee out of his reach. Mm. All right, come on, you. We want to talk to you. Oh. Uh, oh, my head. Sit up. Come on, tell us your story, and we'll give you a nice new box of aspirin. Go away. Where'd you hide your wife's body after you murdered her? Let me lie down. Oh, no, no, you don't. Come on now, open up. Tell us why you hid your wife's body and we'll let you lie down a long time. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Go away. Come on, come on, stop stalling. Don't suppose you remember anything about last night, huh? Where am I? In the lion's den, Daniel. You have as much chance of getting out of a lion's den as getting out of this. Uh, what am I in jail for? Oh, my... Wait a minute. This is getting a little tiresome. You remember going to a party last night? No. You don't remember going to your sister-in-law's home and telling her you'd killed your wife? Me? Tell my wife? Are you crazy? Is this a joke? It's no joke, sonny boy. There were several witnesses to your confession, so just quit the act and let's save a lot of time. 
I don't know what you're talking about. All right, Markheim, here's the story you told at the party. See if it'll ring the bell inside that thick head of yours. Now, according to the witnesses, you came in drunk. They started kidding you about being a mousy little guy, and you started getting tough about it. Seems like I remember something like that. And then you got to feeling brave. You decided you'd impress the gang, and you gave them all the gory details. Whether you remember it or not, you're being held for the murder of your wife, and you'll save yourself a lot of time if you'll just tell us what you did with her. But I don't know what you're talking about. We'll find out sooner or later, Dan. But this is all a mistake, officer. You see, I, I like to read murder and horror stories. Well, when I drink, I get to thinking about them, and it makes me feel brave. Some of the things I've read come to my mind, and I talk about them. That must have been what happened last night. That's a good story. Keep it up. But it's the truth. I don't know what I said last night, but Vera and the rest of them must have been drunk, or they would have known that I hadn't really done anything to Dolly. Why, I love her more than anything in the world. All right. We'll find out whose mistake it is when we find the body. Come on, Joe, let's go. Well, what do you make of it, John? About the funniest case I've ever seen. I'll bet that little runt never takes another drink as long as he lives. You believe his story? Yes, I do. That guy is suffering from an inferiority and a frustration complex. Mm. He gets drunk to make himself believe he's a big shot and a tough guy. Here, take a look at this report. Now, according to this statement from the witness, this guy Markheim didn't say he killed anybody. They just put two and two together. Yes. That's about all the district attorney does. But he usually gets a conviction out of it. But if anybody had ever been found to answer to that woman's description, we'd have a record of it. That dame probably walked up with the first he-man she met and she figured would beat her up regularly. All right, psychologist. Me, I'm just a plain cop that plays hunches. This may turn out to be a course in psychology for me, but I'm going to play my hunch to the limit. Well, what are you going to do? Let's take a run out to the place where Daniel used to live before his wife disappeared. That won't do any good. What makes you think so? Well, we haven't got any howling wind or black cat. Oh, <laughs> nuts. Come on. Now, wait a minute. We're not selling anything. We just want to ask you a few questions. We're police officers. Police? What do you want here? Uh, there isn't anything to be alarmed about, lady. I'd just like to know how long you've been living here. Well, I don't know what you want to know that for. Now, why don't you tell us and don't argue about it? Well, about three years. And that's three years too long. Why? Don't you like the place? No, I don't like the place. Come inside and I'll show you why. That's what we've been trying to do for five minutes. I'm moving out of this stuff. Come on. I don't want to spend another rainy season here. This place gives me the creep. The wind howls and makes funny noises. And we can't keep the dampness out. Besides, I think the place is haunted. You mean you believe in ghosts? Oh, no, that's just a joke. But whoever lived here before we did must have been nuts. Look here, for instance. Here's what I mean. See this button? Sure. What about it? Well, just watch the wall when I push the button. Hmm, secret compartment, eh? Yes, and they're all over the place. Here's a fake dagger we found in one of them. Here, look in this drawer. Well, toy guns. Some old surgical instruments. A lot of cheap detective magazines. Well, did you notice anything else peculiar about the house when you moved in? Oh, nothing in particular, except that it had green lights all over the place that made it look like a morgue. Now, you say you're moving out soon? Just as soon as my rent's up, about two weeks from now. You don't know if the house has been rented, do you? If they ever rent this barn again, it'll be a miracle. No, thanks. Uh, you needn't talk too much about our being out here. Keep quiet. Thanks for showing us the place. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be good. <laughs> Wait till the boys hear about your ghost killer. Now, go ahead and laugh. You haven't heard the last one yet. Neither of you, Joe. Neither of you. Markheim was released because of lack of evidence. Weeks passed with Detective Page spending weary and fruitless hours studying the characteristics and mental processes of Daniel Markheim. They were apparently unvaried and seemed to lead nowhere. Another beer, Jim. Hello, Dan. Mind if I sit down? Well, well, well. If it isn't my friend, Detective Joe Page. Uh, sit down, Joe, sit down. Are you still interested in my criminal tendencies? No, not particularly. No. Well, at least you understand me, even if you're not my friend. Oh, but then I haven't any friends. You are most welcome, my friend. Sit down. Have a drink? No, thanks. I just dropped by on my way home. Of course, of course. Now, listen, Paige, I'm not a dope. 
I've never taken a drink without you popping up beside me. It's just like a detective in a fiction story. Oh, it's all right with me. I enjoy it. But you're just wasting your time. Is that so? Sure. How would you like to hear me recite? <laughs> Go ahead. My life is but a travesty and slander on myself. I have lived to belie nature. All men do. All men are better than this disguise that grows about and stifles them. You see each dragged away by life, like one whom bravos have seized and muffled in a cloak. Hey, you're pretty good. Well, I've read that story, too. It's Markheim by Stevenson. Oh, smart guy, aren't you, Pete? Not particularly. But I've read a few horror tales in my time. Well, here's one you haven't heard. He was a madman. Tortured by the thoughts that she constantly reviled him. But there was one supreme moment worth living eternity for. To hear her begging for her life. Ah, now let's see you finish that one, Joseph. You never can tell. Maybe I will. You're a nice guy when you're sober, Dan. Why don't you stay that way? Sure. I'm nice. Too nice. When I was a kid, I was always so nice, I got beat up by every other kid that couldn't lick anybody else. Then my old man would lick me for not fighting back. But now it's different. Look at these morons around here. They think they're my superior just because they're bigger and tougher than I am. But I know different. They haven't got my nerve. When you've been drinking. Ah, what's the difference? Hey, you! If you don't stop that hiccuping, I'll shove them down your throat. You better sit still. You'll get a sock in the puss. So I'll get a sock in the push. Hey, come on, wake up. Get up on your feet. Hey, what's seat you? Keep away from me. Oh, I smack you. yeah. Hey. Okay, buddy. Get that hurt. Hey, Dan. Dan, come on, snap out of it. Uh, you hurt? Uh, no, nah, forget it. <laughs> Weeks went by. Other headlines grew where the story of Dan Markheim had once flourished. But the machinery of the law relentlessly ground out its investigations. In early one morning in December, officers Page and White called at the apartment of Vera Dresden. Dresden, you're an actress, aren't you? Well, what's my opinion against so many others? Well, professionally speaking. <laughs> I have hopes in that direction. I don't know when I've had a toughest case as this one of your sister's disappearance. Or one that I was as sure of. I think I'm right in what I figured out in this case. I'm going to need your help. In what way? Would you be willing to try a little acting experiment along with Lieutenant Dwight here? Oh, surely. Anything I can. I understand you and your sister are twins. Mm, yes, we were often mistaken for each other. Did she have any peculiarities? I mean little things that might make an impression on a person. Well, I don't exactly understand you. I think Joe means, was she in the habit of doing anything that might get on a person's nerves? Oh. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, she did. She used to... Crack her knuckles. Crack her knuckles? She'd sit sort of looking straight ahead and crack her knuckles. Like this. Mm. Oh, enough of that would get anybody. Anything else? Mm, she used to whistle through her teeth. Did she do much reading? No, she did very little. She'd just sit with that faraway look in her eyes and make you wonder what she was thinking about. Mm. I thought so. What do you mean? Nothing. Did she have any pets? Dog, cat, canary, anything like that? Mm, let me see. Yes, I believe she did. I... I think she had a cat. What kind of a cat? I don't remember much about it. Was it a black cat? Well, yes. Yes, it was. How did you know? Uh, he's been reading a book. Well, have you seen that cat since your sister disappeared? Come to think of it, I don't believe I have. Are you sure you wouldn't mind putting on a little act for it? Oh, of course not. Anything you ask. Ah, Lieutenant Dwight here will work with you. Well, thanks a lot, Miss Dresden. We'll uh, get in touch with you later. Well, come on in. At least you're somebody to talk to, and I've I've got to talk to somebody, even if it is a cop. That's what I like about you, your friendly attitude. Found a job yet? Nope. How do you get the money for the liquor? Hmm, I manage. Well, I've got something that might interest you. It's not a job, but knowing your queer mental quirks, I think at least you'd find it diverting. What do you mean by that? Well, I've spent a lot of evenings being entertained by you, and I thought maybe I could amuse you a little. You're not afraid, are you? Uh... Well, I don't know. Ah, here's your chance to show that you're a man, without being stewed to the gills. 
Have you got the nerve or haven't you? Sure. Why not? Well, you better get some warm clothes on. Pretty raw outside. Well, can we wait until the storm's over? What's the matter? Losing your nerve already? <laughs> I haven't got any to lose. All right. Let's go. Well, where are we going? Maybe we'll open a keg of nails. Yeah. You're going to feel right at home tonight, Dan. Is that so? Here's the car. We're going to have to hurry. We'll be late. Late for what? You like mystery stories? Yes, but what's that got to do with it? I thought you might be able to help me solve one. Well, I'm not so good at solving mysteries. Maybe you never tried. I, I've tried, but I, I've never solved anything. Maybe you have. But so many people solve things the wrong way. Uh, what are you bringing me down here for? You recognize the place? Uh, yes. But why? You told me you'd help me solve a mystery, huh? Uh, sure. Oh, why not? Come on. Let's get out of this rain. I... I like the rain and the wind. I understand it. I don't. Come on. <laughs> Home again. Hey, what are you going around the back way for? The only key I've got. Come on, hurry up. The trees still whisper the same thing. The door hasn't changed a bit, has it? Makes the same noise. Come on. Why don't you turn on the lights? Never mind. Just listen. That whistling. It's Dolly. It's a trick. I know it's a trick. I'm sober. Not true. Keep quiet. Do you remember the sound of that rocking chair? Yeah. Uh, I used to sit in it and read. She sat over there. Her. Dolly. Will you stop that? You have to make those noises. Turn on the lights. Ah. Uh, it is. Dolly. Please don't forget it. Okay. Please don't. Well, why don't you get out if you don't like it? You know I can't go out on a night like this. Then stop that infernal noise. I'm reading. It bothers me. The storm drowned all noises. There was no sound that could be heard above the shrieking of the wind. You hear that? It says that right here in the book. Why do you have to read those awful stories? Because I like them. I don't like the noises you make. I'm sorry. You're just another bully that despises me, aren't you? You annoy me with your whistling and cracking your knuckles. You think I'm afraid to put you away, don't you? You think I'm a coward. Scat! Get out of here, you black devil! Scat! Dan Markheim, let that cat alone! Don't you throw that... <coughs> and now, now I'll tend to you. Dan, put down that axe. Oh, you can't bully me this time. Dan, Dan, don't. Don't! Oh. Hey, so if you're right. It serves you right. No, no, Dolly. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. I didn't mean it. Now, Dolly, listen. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't mean it. Markheim, come back here. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you. That, that's not the way it happened. It, it was that cat, that, that black devil of a cat that made me do it. All right. You tell us about it. Wait. Well, well, one day, we, we, we went down into the cellar, Dolly and I. I was going to cut up some old boxes. I had a hatchet in my hand. The cat followed me down the steep stairs and, nearly throwing me headlong, exasperated me to madness. Uplifting an axe and forgetting in my wrath the childish dread which had hitherto stayed my hand, I aimed a blow at the animal, which, of course, would have proved instantly fatal had it descended as I wished. But this blow was arrested by the hand of my wife. Goaded by the interference into a rage, I withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the axe into her brain. She fell dead upon the spot without a groan. For the love of Mike. No. It's a swell story, Markham. Now tell the truth. Why? What do you mean? That happens to be a quotation from Poe's story, The Black Cat. Oh. Smart guy, aren't you? I told you I'd read those stories, Dan. Now suppose you tell us the truth. All right, wise guy. Come on downstairs. 
You'd better switch on the lights, Paige. Oh, oh, horrible green light. Oh, you don't like these lights, do you, darling sister? Well, maybe you like this better. Oh. The skeleton of a cat. A black cat, Lieutenant. And here's another panel you didn't know about, did you? Put down that gun, Mark Hyman. Sure, I killed her. And I hid her body where you'll never find it. But I didn't mean to, I tell you. I was too much of a coward. Put that gun down. Don't come any closer, Paige. Stay where you are, all of you. I'm not too much of a coward for this. I'll show you I've got some nerve left. Well, he did it. Yeah. I didn't think he had it in him. Daniel Markheim was a psychological study. He had an imaginative mind and fed it by reading horror stories. This explains why Markheim enacted an imaginative crime fabricated from stories he had read and his own vivid imagination. The truth is that he did not kill his wife. She was discovered some years later living in San Francisco. Even when committed in the imagination, crime does not pay. <laughs> <laughs> 